starts with TV. I think, frankly, and I, you know, I apologize to any uh, media folks in the room, I think it started with TV, which at the same time that it raised the cost exponentially of campaigns, it deteriorated the message down to zero or in some cases lower than zero because what can you say in 30 seconds that actually you know means anything to anybody? So it starts with TV as a problem, and then Citizens United made it made it such that the voices of individuals are drowned out by the corporate voices and the super PAC voices. So absolutely, whether it's by overturning this through the judicial system or overturning this through a constitutional amendment, uh, there's many aspects of, of look, going through the constitutional <coughs> amendment practice that I think would be really actually a great thing for America. We, it's been a while since we've done it. I think it would actually be a great thing for our next generation to be involved in the process. Of, but it's, it's, a long, it's a long battle. There's no question about it. But I would absolutely support such a constitutional amendment. Thank you. I would just note that, um, that Ms. Bukhar um, has not yet come out in favor of my campaign finance reform, which would el el eliminate all out-of-state, all out-of-district contributions and limit them to just individuals who live within the district. Uh, with respect to you know what's currently happening in the campaign and playing out on television, uh, my opponent did release another television commercial yesterday, another negative commercial. And I would suggest that 95% of our television commercials have been negative, <laughs> and 95% of mine have been positive. <laughs> now that said, the question is with respect to the question is with respect to Citizens United. I've read the decision, the Citizens United decision, addresses the First Amendment, and I think we need to be whether we agree or disagree with the decision. My opponent just said that she would be in favor of a constitutional amendment overturning Citizen United. Essentially, that's a constitutional amendment modifying for all time the First Amendment right of free speech. I just think that if we're trying to address campaign finance reform, we need to address campaign finance reform. I put out a plan today that I think makes sense. And I would love to see both parties in Bucks County take it to the national level and say, tell us why this doesn't make sense. Before we start amending the Constitution, affecting the First Amendment in such a serious and significant way. Thank you. Well, let's switch gears a little bit, Mr. Fitzpatrick. You'll start us with domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking continue to plague all of our nation's community. What would you do to ensure that victims of violence receive the protection and services they need? First of all, in my in my private practice, I spent a significant amount of time representing um, women and victims of domestic abuse pro bono for free in court. Upwards of a hundred different women, a hundred different cases during my career, and in those representations, I've heard their stories, advocated for them in court, seeking protection orders against individuals, including other family members, for their protection, and then has shaped the way that I, as a legislator, view this important issue. Number two, uh, I was an early, as a member of Congress, an early supporter of the Violence Against Women Act. As a matter of fact, not just supported it at a time when the Violence Against Women Act was unanimously, in a, in a bipartisan fashion, being adopted through Congress, wrote a piece of the bill that had to do with rape prevention and education uh, programs and provided $80 million in funding for those programs. And it's one of the reasons that uh, I've been recognized by uh, domestic abuse uh, organizations, organizations that operate here in this community uh, to combat domestic abuse and domestic violence. And so as a, uh, as a husband and as a father of three young girls, I take these issues very seriously, personally, here at home, have a track record in Washington of advocacy as well. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question. It's really a quick, critical question that I wish we didn't have to be discussing in 2012. I've spent my career representing women. I started out as a legal services lawyer uh, up in rural northeastern Pennsylvania and then down here representing victims of domestic violence as well as low-income, disabled, and senior clients. 
I'm currently on the board of a woman's place. Hopefully all of you are familiar with it. I feel like I need to do a pitch. Uh, a woman's place is a terrific Bucks County organization that's aimed specifically at combating domestic violence in our community. Um, you know, I, Congressman, I wish that what you did in 2005, I wish that you're voting currently were supporting women as much as we should be today. Um, Congressman, I wish you hadn't voted, voted to weaken the Violence Against Women Act. I wish that you hadn't voted to defund Planned Parenthood, which provides critical, critical health care services to women and millions of women and families all across the nation. I wish you hadn't co-sponsored the bill to redefine rape with, with Congressman Todd Aiken and many others. We should be, you know, in addition to supporting women, victims of domestic violence, and others, um, and give it, we should be also making sure we're giving women the opportunities that I was so fortunate to have growing up. We need to make sure that we have pay equity. And we need to make sure that we can help women rise out of these cycles of abuse and poverty. Um, and that all of us can move forward and expect better lives for our children and for my own daughter and all of our daughters. Thank you. Thank you. Another one of these nice, easy 90 second questions. Um, recent events in the Middle East speak to the need for a strong defense, but this is a costly endeavor. Should defense spending be increased, and if so, how will it be funded? Ms. Bulbar, start us with it, please. It's a very, it's a, <laughs> these are all the critical questions, right? Um, look, there's, the, the situation in the Middle East is critical, and you look at the last, you know, the last four months, and it just seems like every week there's a new thing, whether it's Syria or Libya or Iran. Um, and we need to be monitoring these, these issues of national and international security very, very closely. Um, at the same time, um, I don't want to be increasing defense spending. I think we need to be listening to our military leaders about where their needs are and make sure that it's commensurate. If you look at historically, you know, I mean, this goes back, a lot of people actually think the, the, the biggest source of our deficit were the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In fact, that's not true. The biggest source of our deficit were the Bush tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. And it was the only time in American history that we ever went to war and cut taxes at the same time, adding trillions and trillions of dollars to our deficit. So look, I think we have to be fiscally responsible about this. My, because they didn't pay the bill for it then, my 13-year-old daughter and all of our children and grandchildren will be paying for it later. I want to make sure that while we have troops overseas, that they have the best supplies, the most protections, everything they need. But I also want to bring them home from Afghanistan and everywhere else as soon as we possibly can, because we have so many programs and people here in this country that we also need to be focusing on. Thank you. Actually, the biggest, the biggest single source of our deficit and our national debt to date was a single vote that occurred in 2009 called the stimulus bill that spent close to a trillion dollars <coughs> didn't create any family full-time family sustaining jobs and didn't didn't produce the shovel-ready construction projects and infrastructure projects that were promised so that was at a trillion dollars because we have a 16 trillion dollar debt that's one trillion dollars right there with respect to, to defense we have to spend what is required to have a strong national defense. What is required? What is required to secure our borders? What is required to secure the national defense and to protect the American people? That said, uh, there are instances of waste in every agency in the federal government. As, as a county commissioner, you know we, we spent a lot of time making sure our budget's balanced and then we eliminated waste in every department. I'm one of the few members of Congress that actually voted to freeze defense spending at last year's levels. One of the few members of my party to do that, because I believe that we should expect more for what we're for what we're sending to Washington, and that includes in the national defense. So I am very concerned that the president's plan for an eight percent across the board defense cut at the end of this year, and am concerned for the lack of uh, leadership we're seeing coming from the White the White House in order to avoid those very significant serious defense cuts. I don't think we should be cutting defense, especially at this time. I think we can freeze defense spending at last year's levels, and that's how you secure the national defense. Thank you. 